What is this? June. Water and Wastewater Utility Commission meeting order. Start with roll call. Okay. Alder persons Roger Smith. Alder person Kenneth Newman. Commissioner Engel. Aye. Commissioner Logal. Aye. Commissioner Briggs. Here. Commissioner Pastrick. Here. Commissioner Bushke. Here. Citizens comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which consists of the minutes from May and the water and wastewater utility bills. We'll take a motion and a second and have discussion. I'll make a motion to accept second that. Any questions or concerns or comments? I got just a couple of questions on the uh, bills here. Selmo sure. Electric air compressor, well number two. What do we do there and why would the city electrician use? Um, the air compressor. That's on page one. Okay. Yeah, the air compressor. $950, April 18th. We took it from two because it was far better than the one that was in, uh, or we took it from four and moved it to, to well two. Oh, okay. Because that one was just all, it was that or scrap and, it. Uh, Colensburg couldn't do that? Um, too busy. doesn't really like to do some of the larger stuff oh, okay. for us. I, I don't know, busy. Usually. Okay. Hydrant painting, page two, core and main, $5,625. Uh, how many did we get done for that? So they just sent that bill from last year. Oh. So that was last year's I know it's auditor's nightmare. Uh, 50, 50. Uh, on the top of my head. Yeah. Then what did it come to a piece? I think, I think it was like 47. So 125 a piece. Yeah, Same floor floor floor. Floor. We started that program with 100, so they did. Yeah, we cut out the middleman coming up for. And they sandblasted them down and yep. painted. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch. They they blast them, they prime them, and they paint them, and it doesn't take very long. Okay, well, one other thing, I looked at the uh, Wool Road fence, but what what on the last page is 4,800 dollars. And so, what you said they extended the culvert there and so, put another gate in? Yeah, we put the culvert there, then we had to repair the fence. That fence was hit, I think, somewhere around the time when I first started, too. It was either a snowmobile or a. Did that always have two openings to get in there? No. You put another gate so, in there? So, yeah, where we it? extended the drive so the truck could get in, we extended the the gate there, oh, too, okay. so we can pull straight up to it. All right, so it wasn't just the gate, it was the culvert you extended, too. Yeah, and the culvert. So, and then the fence had to re be replaced going, like, two sides of it. Somebody, I think an ATV or something, sometime around when I started, took out mm -hmm. half the post. All right, I was just wondering what was coming here. So that's it. Perfect. All kinds of good stuff. Anything else? If not, we'll take roll call on that. All the first, all some, excuse me, Commissioner Engel? Aye. Commissioner Pasbrick? Aye. Commissioner Lodal? Aye. Commissioner Franks? Aye. Commissioner Sushki? Aye. Oh, we can do that if you guys want. How long has this been? Uh, CMAR, like two seconds. All right. Next on the agenda, discuss the possible action regarding resolution 0001-2023 for approval of compliance maintenance annual report. Um, so that's just our annual sewerage report that we have to pass a resolution for every year before submitting to the DNR. Um, flows, any overages, um, appropriate staffing, certifications. What was um, our grade? I think we had an A on everything. Yeah, the overall was an A too. I, it was really a very good report. I, I, so, yeah, I read it this afternoon. Yeah, we had, I don't see any place that we don't have an A. Well, one little small thing. Yeah, is, is it a spelling one? It would be one? the second page. Okay. Uh, was uh, item three, flow meter. Yep. They asked for uh, calibration date, month, month, day, day, year, year, year. You've got year, month, day. That is a little backwards. So. <laughs> they probably I reject it for sense. that. Okay, I can fix that. Um, yeah, I, I thought we were pretty good. It's pretty similar to the other so, years. Yeah, to last yeah. year's. You were able to, at several spots there, to point to the fact that we are standing on the verge. Yeah, I wanted to kind of... <laughs> Make that fast pretty, pretty clear there. I think we had to answer mostly to the any SSOs or TFOs. That's always going to be our standard 
our standard answer until it's fixed. Anything else? If that will take a motion to approve that. I move to approve. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Take roll call on that. Commissioner Ingo? Aye. Commissioner Kasprick? Aye. Commissioner Lodal? Aye. Commissioner Frings? Aye. Commissioner Bush. So, Aye. Yeah. 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 So you have something other than to do it than to close the doors. I'm depressed. He's probably going to ask for overtime people. And he's going to want to raise them. <laughs> Next is the presentation discussion of 2022 audit. It feels weird to be on the side of the room. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> change. Well, we were trying to accommodate for tonight's public hearing with podium and oh. viewing and audience. So well, I think I know everyone, but in case, in case you don't know me and uh, Bethany Ryers, I'm the partner in charge of the utility audit. And it's a pleasure to be here today to um, talk through the results of your 2022 um, financial audit. Included in your board packet, we just passed around with nice fresh hard copies. Um, you have two reports. You have the um, audit insights and results report. That's the one with the nice turquoise cover. And that kind of goes through our responsibilities as it relates to the audit. The required communication that we're required to communicate to you all as the governing body um, as it relates to the audit. And a lot of other good exciting information, maybe not exciting, but strong word, but good information related to the audit. And that's kind of what I'm going to summarize for you today. You also have the audited financial statements with a lot of good supplementary information for the water and wastewater utilities. Um, and a, a two-page handout with some key financial metrics that I'll also walk through. So included in the audit insights and results report, just to point out a few required information um, on page six of that report, there's a discussion of internal control matters. Now as um, required by auditing standards, we are required to do a risk assessment and review procedures and controls around key financial areas. And as in prior years, and as is uh, very common with utilities of your size, you do have a material weakness related to financial reporting um, and segregation of duties just because you don't have the, the funds to hire two or three additional people to ensure you have proper segregation of duties. And so uh, the commission takes on a higher um, uh, role in the oversight um, oversight department. Uh, so, question on that. Yeah. Uh, as the city is expanding their uh, department in that area, is it possible for us to co-mingle some of the workers and come up with the oversight you're looking for? Yeah, and I think you do. Um, for like payroll and disbursements and that sort of thing. Um, so this is something that we have a chance of getting our fingers around? Not completely, no. I mean, in order to get away from the financial statement material weakness, you'd have to pretty much hire a full-time CPA that would be able to interpret and implement new governmental accounting standards and put together this full set of financial statements of no small task. And, no, and, and that's a big gap for that. Yeah, most, most most governments in Wisconsin get that material weakness for that same reason. They just don't have the budget for it. Um, for segregation of duties, I think you can probably um, put in enough uh, duplicate controls to get rid of most of it. Um, I think the past few years, especially, just had a lot of turnover and it just hasn't been feasible. But yeah. I mean, oh, and if you want to chat through them in detail, we can talk about ways to bypass some of those and, and get rid of that in the report. But again, it's also something pretty common because people come in, you know, they pay their bills. Sometimes the only person there to collect it is the person who prepares their bills and sends them out. So, and yeah, we are actually working with City Hall, but they are taking my payments for me now. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, at the deputy clerk's. Not something that happens overnight, but we can work toward getting rid of that. For sure. okay. um, the other section I kind of want to point you to is uh, starts on page nine, and this is the required communication. 
There's a lot of good information in this report. Talks about what our role is as your auditor. Um, this section is specific to um, there's a, a lot of information in um, AICPA standards that says what we're required to communicate to the governing body. I will say not much changed from year to year. It's pretty boring to read, but um, if there ever is a change or something that really needs to be communicated to you, it shows up in this section. Uh, so for 2022, there were two new accounting standards that were effective, but neither one of them had an impact on your financial statements at all. So everything's pretty same old, same old as in prior years. Um, we did have some audit adjustments um, that are included in this report. Um, no disagreements with management, we're independent. Uh, a lot of good information. I used to tell people, you know, if you ever have insomnia, it's a really good thing to read, but there is a, a lot of good information included in there as well. Okay. Any questions on that report? And of course, you know, if you do ever have any questions as you have more time to read through it, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. You know, ultimately, we work for the commission. Um, we are required to report to you. So if you have any questions or concerns at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to hear from you, not just during audit time, but throughout the year as things come up. Okay. Um, there, I did give, give you all a, a two-page report. I'm going to tell you about a few boo-boos I made, but um, we can go through some of the key financial metrics. The first page shows the metrics for the water utility. Um, the water utility had a rate of return of 1.96 this year, which was a little bit of an increase from last year. Uh, probably mainly because we had that simplified rate the increase. Separate page. Yes. Um, I did make my one little boo-boo there. Your authorized rate of return is 3.5%, not 4.9%. A blessing and a curse, the PSC currently for their simplified rate case cases in 2022 is offering an 8% increase, which normally they teeter between 3 and 4%, but now they're offering an 8% increase if you apply um, with uh, an authorized rate of return of 6 or 6.5%, which is really great. So I know we're in the process of working through that water rate case for you. Um, hopefully we'll be able to present at your July board meeting the results of that for approval to um, submit that to the PSC, um, but we'll be able to give you some um, good rate of return options then because they're going as high as 6% in the current inflationary environment. Um, the next graph shows um, operating revenues and expenses for the last five years. And your revenues have been pretty steady, nothing very exciting. You can see the expenses have um, gone up uh, steadily for the last couple of years. Um, the last four rate cases I mentioned was October 2015 with the simplified rate case uh, effective January of 2022. Um, the largest driver for the increase in your expenses in 2022 is, um, uh, you know what, not, not actually too much. We had some inflationary increases for fuel power for pumping just due to the current environment for electricity and fuel. And then a slight increase in maintenance due to some additional main breaks in the current year. So it's been more than, a little bit more than normal, but um, not too bad. The unrestricted reserves, you do have a healthy uh, cash reserve in the water department. Um, the GFOA recommends that you have approximately um, no less than three months of unrestricted cash on hand. If you want a good quality bond rating, you, um, you they normally want to see closer to nine to 12 months. Um, and you've got 29 months of um, cash reserves at $3 million of unrestricted cash. Keep in mind with the well project coming up and um, debt that will be taken out for that, you will have some additional restricted requirements um, and additional debt coverage requirements as well and an increased pilot payment. So we'll be taking a look at what any new rates would do to your cash as well as we go through that uh, great, uh, great case. Um, your debt coverage, again, looking really well. It's been decreasing a, a little bit over the past few years just with the increasing operating expenses, but you're still at five times your required coverage. Um, keep in mind that this calculation only takes into account your revenue bonds, 
it doesn't take into any account any geo bonds that are outstanding, so there's no debt coverage requirement on those. And then, of course, we have your uh, debt to equity ratio, which is showing at 73% um, financed by equity of your capital investment financed by equity and 27% financed by debt. We normally want to see 50% or lower financed by debt and 50% or higher financed by equity, but it really all depends on where you are in your life cycle. You know, if you have major improvements in capital infrastructure, you know, your, your percentage uh, funded by debt will likely be a little bit higher. So that's just the nature of the beast. As you pay that down, it'll be higher in equity, and then you'll have to pay for some very expensive upgrades again. How much do you think that water tower is, or no, well house is going to I think it was um, three million would yeah. be approval. So what would that be percentage-wise? A couple percent? I'd have to, I, I can't say that off the top of my head. <laughs> so we're going to be closer to the 50% than the other way, right? Um, probably. Obviously. I mean, I, I think you have some other um, projects coming up. I don't know how much or how much will be bond funding for that. Pretty small impact, like 300,000. There, those projects were. But the, the well over here, quite a bit. Yeah, we also have the uh, utilities on Alley Street. What was the other? Yeah, Alley Street and the Metalcraft Loop, oh. which those those are both pretty small ones in comparison. The three million and the and well four is the biggest by far. Um, well, the next page, or again, turn that one over. We have the sewer results. Um, this one, the graph looks a little funky. Uh, the expenses did exceed your revenues, but when you read the numbers that are right next to them, they're kind of flipped. So your revenues were uh, 1.4 million, 1.5 million, and your expenses were 1 million 5, 12, 299. Uh, your sewer rates were effective May 2010, so it has been a while. The large increase you see in the operating expenses is driven by the increase in sludge hauling and chemicals. That was an increase of about close to $100,000 from the prior year. Um, there were some other slight increases related to, again, fuel, electricity because of the current environment and um, some televising expenses for maintenance. The unrestricted reserves, we currently have about 12 months um, of unrestricted funds on hand or, or months of revenues on hand in your unrestricted cash account. Uh, however, the past three years, you haven't been making the um, replacement fund um, deposit into the replacement fund account. So if you were to take that out of the last three years, you'd be closer to 8.6 months of unrestricted cash on hand. And why weren't we doing that? Because I think that was, was that old controller treasurer that was? Yeah. They weren't started. doing it here, right? Yeah, Yeah, because yeah, I can't. It was turnover, and, and the, the treasurer here has control of, of doing those cash transfers. So how do you do that? Um, well, you're required by the DNR to um, make that payment, everyone, um, or every year, sorry. Uh, obviously, you got a good grade on your <laughs> on your report, so I don't think they're going to do anything about it. But. No, and, I, and I'll make sure that it happens um, at the end of the, by the end of this year. So are they going to go back and... Do a retroactive. Yeah, it can go back for years. Yeah, the, the requirement on the CMAR is sufficient by what they have on their website, but that's all going to change again with facilities planning, and there's a lower value required. Um, yeah, there's there's two ways to do it. You can do the annual um, payment based off of your listing uh, um, of what's on your replacement mm -hmm. account, funding list, mm -hmm. or you, um, there's a, a lower threshold that you can just maintain and not do an annual requirement. But that threshold, I'd have to look at that. I think there's a table on their website that tells yep. you what it will be based like on. Like what your plant value is and the percentage you have to have funded, kind of the same as like life cycle yeah. costs. Yeah, the same for the sewer as it is for water? No, for sewer, you've got 12 months. For water, you've had 29 months. But I mean what you recommend is you should at least have the minimum yes. months for the same people. Yes, and I would, I would Recommend GFOA recommends three months minimum. I would recommend close to nine to twelve. There we go. Twelve. You got twelve. If you take out the replacement account funding, you've got eight point six. Oh, right. Um, and where's the replacement account? 
It is not on here. It is on the face of your financial statements as a restricted account. Um, that fund can be used for, you know, paying for capital improvements, etc. So it is important to know that you have that available. And you've historically been very good about using it whenever you have those items that come up. Uh, page nine on uh, the, for the wastewater utility statement and net position. You'll see it under non-current assets replacement account. Right. Page nine. They do have a lot of good information. You can see this Google DNR replacement account. You'll find their website and they have a lot of really good information out there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, your debt coverage for sewer uh, has been has been creeping up a little bit as well, but you still got you're still well over your required amount, three point nine. Um, is your actual coverage and your required is one point two five? Again, that only relates to your um, revenue bonds. Doesn't include geo bonds, but uh, that is a really good amount. I would just still keep an eye on it since it is creeping down. Um, and similar to the water utility, you've got some aging infrastructure where you have your debt to equity ratio is 76% equity and 24% funded by debt. I have to go backwards here. I'm still stuck on this replacement fund. No, you're good. So there was both 22, 21 and 22, there was over a million dollars that should have been shifted into that replacement fund? No, that is your total balance in the replacement fund. Oh, okay. Every year from 2020 to 2022, you should have deposited an additional $147,000 into it. $150,000 a year. Yeah. And we have $1.1 million in there, one point two. Yeah. And why wasn't that done again? Just because of... Well, um, the treasurer is the one who does the cash transfers and the turnover that you've had the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, it just has been missed. But I'm sure if you ask whoever starts, yes, it's <laughs> going to be done. Then um, they'll be happy to transfer the money. Yeah. <coughs> any questions on anything in the financial statements or any of the metrics or the audit insights from results report or anything at all? I'm happy to answer anything for you. Otherwise, the audit went very well, smoothly. Obviously, it's so important when it takes ship. We're always very hopeful, so we really do appreciate it. All their time and effort. As much as it takes us to prepare the audit, do all the testing, and bug them as much as we do, mm -hmm. uh, they probably they probably spend twice as much time preparing for us and answering all of our questions. So we do appreciate all of their help. How many hours do you spend on that? It's been a while. Probably close to 200. Between hours. everybody in your company? Yes. On um, just the utility audit. The city right. audit is a lot. 200 hours. Probably. It might be more than that. I'm, I'm ballparking it. Right. <laughs> so it's thorough. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's pre pre uh, preparation of the financial statements as well, which takes a bit of time. You're two or three days with us and a couple months deep in the yeah, yeah. question and answer sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? I think so. There is no presentation and discussion. I don't know. They don't have to actually like approve any. Do we usually right. approve it? I don't know. I go to too many of these. <laughs> I don't think so. I no. think it's just a QA and a your auditor's Yeah. Well, I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to drop this back off the end. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Long night, yeah. Next on the agenda, discuss discussion of prospects regarding new library impact and connection fees. Um, that one came up with the new um, 
with the new building, um, we assess the building inspection as we and we assess that these, um, as we saw, fitting. Um, there is no obviously specific connection fee category for a library because we don't build those every day. Um, impact fee is pretty simple because it's based off the meter sizing that they put in the building. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, so the only thing that fit, there's a um, type of a sheet, it's kind of small, but type of development, um, some is based off of like a nursing home per bed, um, a school per student, um, retail store, small business. There's not really anything categorically that it's perfectly, so we assess it on by the number of books. <laughs> books don't use a lot of these. <laughs> what about ebooks? Well, that's that would be a problem. <laughs> um, so we assessed it small business offices and retail store were the same, um, and it was per 100 square feet. And the new library is 36,000 square feet. So, how big is it? 36,000 square feet. Well, you go the basement separately. Well, okay, that's that's part of the argument. So we assessed um, the fees came to a total of about twenty two thousand. I can find it here quick, but with both both assessments, so the thirty six thousand square feet um, and the per right, per square foot price. Um, someone from the library had approached me, and that was one question: is do we have to charge for the size of the basement? and um, if those fees could be reduced. So there's a letter in the packet. I wanted to see what we've done in the past um, that could get into legal issues, what we did with the tag center. Did you check uh, with any other communities that built a new library lately, what they did? Uh, or that the only once in a blue It kind of is. Uh, I mean, the last one I can think of is Hartford locally, but that, that thing is a... Lamira Monster, Lamira. Yeah, did they? Yeah. Did they have a library in their city hall complex there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, although that been a good. And there's some community. How about the rest of your addition? In addition. So it, yeah. it's a one time fee. So it's the first build, one time fee. So if it's a. Uh, so you know, what's that what's the contention on, on, on the fee? I mean, it's too much. Well, I, I, I am in somewhat in agreement on that. I mean, I think that they told me that there was a total of 26 toilets and sinks and and everything in there. Okay. Uh, What's the purpose of the fee? That's that's part of it. Okay. It's a it's for capital improvement, so it's a one time. It's, it's what we the city charge every everyone. Every, every, any every, new yeah. any new building addition to yeah. the city, so it's that capital improvement cost for. Do you have that uh, that data in? It isn't in the electronic bag. I looked through that this afternoon. The impacts and connection? It is. Where is it? Or the connection fee? It's the third from last page. Is the connection fee? What does the size water mean that goes in there as sewer main or sewer ladder? What is the size of their ladder going in there? Um, I can. They're they're lateral specifically. I wouldn't know. They don't. I don't get that information. Their size meter was a. Two inch meter. Is it two inch, I had heard. Yep. It's got that second AM. So. It's a two inch meter. So the impact fee for water facilities, a two inch meter is $7,464. Well, I don't think that would be doing really it. Would you say that would be in line with the tag center? I mean, there, what is their meter? Is it like three inch meter? At least the three or five or four. Yeah, it's a three inch. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, Hey, Cinder, I mean, as far as impact, they have hundreds of people going through there a day. I don't know if you can do anything with the water because the PSC has rulings on that you need, you know, a fair and equitable approach, and they govern the water system. So you're stepping a little bit into legal territory. Um, there is some. But well, we statutes. could play with the square footage on a sewer. Correct. I think it's how you interpret the law. I'm not going to say that 100%. There's some legal in there from yeah. Nolan. Um, it kind of goes back and forth as to if you can do that or not. Well, the um, and then it looks like there was a reduction on the take center. The, the basement is finished. We're using all of the basement. I don't know how I can. Yeah. Well, that's I not going to be finished. finished. Yeah. But it will be finished. Yeah, it was told it's not going to be used yeah. for now. Well, how about the fire protection? Does that come into play here with what you can charge for impact fees? 
Um, no, we can't use that meter sizing. Um, it's just billed monthly on their bill, the fire okay. protection, based on the size of the, um, the fire protection. Line. So that's proportionate. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we all want to do the right thing for every, everybody involved here. But, uh, yeah. We have a limited budget here to work with, and we need we need to be compensated for what it costs us to hook things up and well run our business. Is yeah. it what it costs us? I don't. I don't think this covers what it costs us to look up. I think it no, it's, I mean, it's capital costs over time, improvements to the whole, you know, system wide yeah, every time a new building system. comes into play. Well, that meter alone has to be $3,000, right? Just the water. Yeah, and that would be something we would provide. I think it was at least three, if not three, four, closer to four. Yeah. But you're saying by standard calculation, the water would be $7,400? Yes. What you said? Yep. And that, that one is pretty straightforward, the meter size. The, the problem we're having is the category for connection fees. It doesn't truly well, fit. You any know, that's what category. I got from this letter is, you know, it could be this, it could be that, yeah. vague, I'm not sure, like whatever. Yeah. How much latitude do we have on, on um, making a, a reasonable man's judgment, a reasonable mm -hmm. woman's judgment on what it ought to be and move yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, yeah, category. We went over this list a hundred times and you know, the only thing that really, I mean, school kind of fits. It's, it's kind of like a school, sort of, but um, you can't charge per student because you don't know how many students right. they're, right. they're going to be. So right. the square footage yeah. seemed to be the best fit. Uh, oh, and what was the cal his calculation was 22,000? Yeah, so that, that includes impact and connection. So the 7,400 for um, on this chart for... Oh, uh, impact and then the remainder was by square footage for the connection. Do you think that'll be palatable? Um that, I, I mean that's what we originally charged um on the on the permit. That's that's what we calculated and then um someone and, from the library came and yeah. wanted to work with us on that. So I brought it tonight because it wasn't gonna Okay, but when they took the permit, they, they knew that the potential was that it would be the full well, from, yeah, I guess from development, I don't think in this situation anybody really asked specifically ahead of time about that. I mean, these are all available as charts to developers, and they were provided at one time yeah. for multiple I mean, it developers. It didn't up being the city building, so we're going to be responsible for the maintenance of it, too, after, after this is all done. Yeah, done, yeah, right? it's... Um, it seems to me that that you know it's hard to justify that twenty-two thousand. It would me saying something. I'd say fifteen thousand, and we have an equal for the impact on the water and the sewer. I think we just have to justify the numbers that we use to get there. Yeah. If you're going to make any like, like you're decision. saying, take out the basement square footage, yeah, and see what that number would be. When do we need a decision on this? Does it have to be tonight or? Um, I don't think so. I think we have a, people probably know better than me what the I mean, plan no, is of the library. Permit, yeah, that. occupancy, they, yeah, they're, they're gonna wanna be. Cool. Yeah, so that two inch meter is 74, 64. Yeah. I don't really understand um, Ron Weller's calculations on here when he did a reduction for the take center. I, I don't I don't know where those calculations. And, you know, that's the trouble I got is it's just like he was just shooting all over the place and, and that was happening then so yeah i can't i can't really make sense of where these numbers came from so i don't know to go off that and you know if you're saying fair and equitable do you do the same for the take well, what, was the, what was it for the tag center that they charged them back then 20 what is it five so years yeah so the original estimate was seventy nine thousand seven hundred twelve, um and they did a reduction and it must have been i'm guessing units Maybe they estimated the units that were going to be used, um, and they ended up paying. I think this is just for connection thirty thousand five hundred fifty-two. Yeah. So it dropped considerably. It was a pretty significant reduction. Yeah. But you have no idea how we came up with it. No, I, I think it's a units yeah. estimate. I'm I'm not exactly sure what the numbers mean here. They're there. I just don't know what where they came from. So would it be reasonable to estimate that the take center originally projected to use 86 units of water a month and then they came down to 33 units i think that's what it looks like to me yeah right yeah 
I go along with that next sentence. Mm -hmm. You could probably use just about the same estimate on the. Yeah, but I also don't know where the 925 came from. <laughs> well, was that 2001? Uh, yeah, and maybe the, the fees were different at that time. I'm not really sure where the numbers came from, but I don't see anything close to that. I mean, per $1,200 per washing machine, that's. Uh, yeah. We changed these connection fees about about six years ago. I think that was just about the time I got on council. Okay. I don't know. This, I mean, this version I retyped. Oh yeah, we would have saved some space on it for sure. Yeah. So those, yeah, those so numbers you don't know exactly where they were. Because we lost so much money on the tax. He had the library to that. Yeah. <laughs> But this is a one time fee. This isn't something. Yeah. Tanks and so what they have a water only meter there for just for what? For the pool that they don't pay the Oh, uh, well, one is for the garden. That's true, then, no? Mm -hmm. but I don't want to know for that anymore. Just they take two, that one out? I, yeah, don't. I think there's just the two big meters. Oh, out. you know, we never, we just credited them or something for that. I don't yeah. know. Well, That's what right. is that one for? Is that for filling the pool or just right. charging? Yeah, one, one strictly for the pool, I believe, in the battery. Yeah. What is like a, we call it a deduct or whatever it is. There's pool water and then there's facilities. And what happens to the pool water when they decide to drain it? I don't know. I don't know their operations at all. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that would wind up in our plant too. Well, I think that discharge is uh, going to the storm sewer, if I remember right. Oh, okay, good. I don't know anything about their operations. Yeah, that would be something to check out. Right? Chlorine in the river. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm sure it yeah. discharges yeah. as the yeah. yeah. so, you know, I don't remember exactly. I know he empties it once a year. Obviously, he's empties it once a year. I mean, I don't know. It could be a storm drain. But like he says, he might want to put pool water into the storm. Well, unless he's adding. Oh, by sulfate. Yeah, probably, yes. You know, he might have a drain. I'm sure they set it up and just add by sulfate. Oh, well, that's really what we need to talk about here. Anyway. All right. So, what's your take on this? Right. I, I don't well, know. I'm sure we'll get on the sand. It's not a big mushroom. It's been something that comes to the water. That's the best we can do. Okay. So, added to next month's agenda with a total. Removing basement. basement square footage is the sorry, I just kind of like the half motion that I'm for you there. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, I don't think we need a motion to second. Yeah. Just so, ask, I, you just want to bring action. it back. Yes, we're going to bring it back. Yeah. So I guess a motion and second table would be better. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Water report. Here we go. I have a backwards agenda here. All right. Um, asphalt specialists will be here tomorrow for patches for both water and sewer. Um, the submitted intent to apply, applic apply applications for Meadowcraft, Waterloop, Alley Street. Um, next year's Muzzy and Allen and water systems have all been approved by the DNR for safe drinking water loan programs. Um, water tower inspections are now required every year rather than every five years by the DNR. Our most recent recognized deficiencies in a sidewall vent at Clark Street. Um, state code repairs run about $4,500 and replacement of this side vent $9,500. Um, Tim, if you wanna, you have a little more information on that, unless I I'm got a, it covered. There's a cap on the top and where your venting is, supposedly it's gotta be brought down so far that snow can't get in there and it can freeze up and they got pictures of it's only halfway, they can weld up a thing on it and get it down to where it's supposed to be for 4,500 or they replace the whole unit with a stainless steel unit and it's 9,500. I, I don't know. You can do it two ways. The one he'll just weld it on and paint it for 45, and I guess. Well, I think we should do the one for 4,500 and do the other one when we repaint the whole tower right. coming up. Yeah. Well, that's. I think we have some time to. And I, I wouldn't push this compliance thing. I haven't heard anything yeah. from the DNR, but I know 
They still do the five year where you go inside and dive, but now they do an annual. Well, when do you plan on painting that again, Walter? It's got to be in the next five years. Come, yeah, I'm sure. Show so. Why don't you crawl up there, Walter? <laughs> Um, they also noted our safety climbing cable in there is um, no good anymore either. So that's yeah, that's uh, not at any times. The climbing cable so old. Yeah, you're supposed to have a full body harness and all right. yeah. these harness. Yeah. yeah, everything code wise is oh. continually it needs, changing. It needs some Do renovation. Do you do the safety check or do you have it outside cars? Uh, we don't climb it. We don't climb it. No. We no use a up. company called Water Tower Clean Coat. Of course. Uh, <laughs> you got other guys you can use. There's numerous guys that do it, and it's all independent first party guys. Yeah. I'm sure they got to follow me all the way. So you're saying this $4,500, you're just anticipating that this is going to be. Well, he, they're going to send this report to the DNR, and eventually she's going to call and say you're going to do this. And they'll attach a sign. Why, why not just wait till the DNR calls? We, we can. That's, that's fine. fine. You're going to get a non compliance letter and you're going to get all the hoops and then you're trying to line me and I'm going to line it up. That makes and sense. we can do that. And I would not. Right? I'm just asking. Yeah, I mean, it makes either sense. Way to do you guys, whatever way you want to do it. It's coming either way. But the only reason I can see doing the stainless steel versus the building of Galeranias corrosion or whatever. Cook. Is that a problem? Corrosion? Yes. Well, yes. Till we, like Mike said, we need to. But you need to paint. A renovation of the whole thing. Paint drive, that. drive by and look at it. You can see the coating's coming off. Numerous touch-ups. Everything's been done. Uh, it was done in 1998 or 99. Yeah, 1999. It's coming. Mm -hmm. And at 20, 23 years is exceptionally. That's a long time. A long yeah. time to have a tower. Well, at least this time we don't have lead paint to get rid of. <laughs> so you want a decision? He did send no, it's just a no because I couldn't put it. I just wanted it. It's, it's coming. I can oh. add it to a next agenda um, no, 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 if you no. want, but I mean, just a little information. Like Mike said, I would leave it and do it all at one time. If we're going to renovate and do this tower, the safety ladder, all the upgrades mm -hmm. that need to be done and things that need to be if done. If the DNR doesn't give us, you know, you have to have it done next month urgency. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they give us you know, some time on it. And make a it. year to two years out. And painting is what I'm told. Yeah. So if you want to paint next year, you'd have to come as commit now for next year. And I think he said somewhere between three fifty and four hundred thousand right now. That was just the ballpark from <laughs> from this fellow. And there's numerous guys that do it. Yeah. Um, last date for lead water service replacements in June is June thirtieth. Um, that date's been extended two or three times already from last year's grant. Um, we've been tagging doors, calling residents, um, knocking on doors randomly, just trying to find another one to get in there. But we haven't we haven't found any since. I don't know if we found any this year. Oh, we have one. Maybe yeah, maybe one that we found this year, but um, we can't find any more by any means that we know of. So um, hopefully we got them all accounted for. I'd hate to see somebody. You know, find one. And, two and that's got funding. Close and that's yeah, funding's funding's closed. We're sending them back about one hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. That I can't come up with how to use. <laughs> that's a, it's a problem. Come on, Hunter, yeah. you should be able to find those. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find lead. I was trying to use it. Um, we met in late May for pre-construction meeting for well number four. Um, C.D. Smith has started staging the work area, and teardown should begin this week. They're going to take this the week. yeah, Correct. they're going to take the roof out first, um, and then they have to pull that iron tank out and knock the wall out, pull the tank out, haul it off for remediation. So they're not going to implode that building. Oh, that'd be kind of fun though. <laughs> Ooh, we could. Well, that'd be fun. Still happen. Um, we were. Selected by the EPA to run some additional sampling. Um, I know one of them is lithium that we got selected for, which is completely random. Um, they're going to send all the kits. They pay all the shipping. We just have to fill the bottles, and it's it's just based off of pop population size and selection. So is that would be that be naturally occurring, or is that something that could be drifting in from? Um, I've been trying a few days to navigate the EPA's website. <laughs> And I'm hoping to have clearer instructions with those kits. I, it's not very clear what they want. All I know is they're going to send it to us when they want it. So well, that's all I got out of it. Battery to throw in the well, you know, that, that's an issue. 
Well, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. Especially when they get the big ones in there. Yeah. Um, the low income state program that we did a couple months ago, I know we signed up for, um, you know, you can call for low income water bill assistance. Um, it was just a few months ago that we started doing it. Um, just today, just a little update, we um, recouped a little over $7,000 so far in, in water bill payments. So they pretty much estimate a customer's year's worth of water bills um, and they it stays with the account. If anybody ever moves from a rental property or something like that, it stays on the account. You, you don't send it back, but that's going to save us a lot of time on um, end of the year. Uh, going to taxes and things like that. So that took care of a lot of those already in revenues. Um, that's all I have for water. Yeah. Ice flushing complete? Uh, we're getting close, but not complete. I think we have uh, in the paper till like the third, second or third week in June. We had a couple setbacks in the last week with uh, hydrants breaking. <laughs> Two weeks like after. Road up here. Yep. Yeah, the shafts are corroded away. And that's so when you go to turn them, you just break them off. Yeah, the shaft, and it's probably the size of your pinky finger, and it's corroded away, and it's just not allowed to just break off down the road. The last break on Clark Street, I think we almost had an issue there by by Seneca. It's, it's we off right flushed, now, right Well, we flushed at the so. end of the. We flushed at the end of cleaning up that main break, and that was the second main break that day. Um, I think, what did I have to do? Stick my, I had to hold the rod in place, just yeah. needed to yeah. stick my arm and get the rod in place. And just so shut for the night. Corner beam, I had someone like yeah. turn extremely, extremely hard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But we're getting we're there. On the we're also with the, the hydrant flushing, we're putting it all into the GIS system. So we're documenting static residual pressures and GPMs for every hydrant too. So it takes a little bit longer on the flushing to get everything together and document it all, but it'll, it. once we have it in there, it's all there. It's, you know, it's got a valve on it. Yeah, if it has a valve, the type. It, the what kind of it is, what year it is. The year. It'll all be in the system. That's good. 27 turns or seven, and what size cheater bar you need. <laughs> yeah, that's all I have for the other side. Any other questions? Now we'll move on to wastewater report. Um, after in our laboratory audit last month, um, our auditor nominated um, Mike Kelly for lab of the year through DNR. So that would be on next year's schedule. Yeah. So he got his auditor nominated him. It was pretty cool. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah, what will we know job. the results of that? I think it's for a 2024 okay. cycle, so sometime in next spring to summer. We need to hop on that right away. Yeah. The paper. Yep. For sure, we got to win. Like well, even just to get nominated. I think yeah, it's so. pretty cool. We should. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, Whether it gets there or not, that's that would yeah. be icing on the mm -hmm. on the cake. But uh, <laughs> it would be very nice to get yeah. in the paper that it was nominated. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, utilities assist, we talked about this earlier, but the, the DNR and other departments with river cleanup uh, from an oil, can't really say spill, on 6 1 and 6 5. Um, bills are being submitted for time and materials on that one and equipment. Um, police departments handling all the billing and the. No, was your bill? How much? It was like $1,000. We had. We had an hour of um, flushing the line on Thursday and clean up, so like an hour and a half, and then like another hour and a half we had to jet it on Monday morning too. So it's it's not a lot. We revise fees one day for jetter and equipment and personnel and things like that too. Um, we already talked about the time change for the agenda. I think that's taken care of, right? Changing the time of the meetings to what? Um, well, you want to on that one? It's not really on the agenda, so I don't think we can take. Oh, I, no, not any call. Just I, I don't know what you're doing discussion wise. Were you? Oh, no, we're not really. Well, can we begin? You can't do it. Okay. All right, I can't do anything. One one commission member 
you can't make the four o'clock time. So it was just kind of a note discussion there. Yeah. Well, I think we could talk about that after we meeting. Well, at the next meeting, maybe you explain the lot Okay. Um, let's see here. In our uh, youth, let's see here. We have one summer help that um, transitioned last year kind of into a work to school program, like a couple hours here and there. Um, just today, um, CESA called and he would like to transition to a youth apprenticeship, which is it's pretty much calling it something else and he's, he's already working. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that it needs to be an agenda. It's exactly the same hours. We call it something else and I get extra paperwork. So, but um, information with yeah. summer help. Yeah, he's yeah he's summer help. That was uh, I did some paperwork for the high school as a you know that fulfilled some of his credit hours, and now he'd like to do that going into his senior year as an apprenticeship yeah, through he, CESA. He it doesn't yeah nothing or nothing hours okay. nothing changes. Yeah. So Sounds good. Yeah, that's it for wastewater. Any questions? Any uh, any impact on the. Uh, when I heard about the guy dumping the barrel of oil into the river or whatever it was? Um, yeah, I mean, we cleaned it up the best we could. We flushed with the hydrant and holes for, we flushed that storm for about an hour and we were pushing plenty of Where did that happen? Um, right down, just like two blocks away down Walnut Street. So it was a direct shot the, uh, to the river. It's pretty easy to tell. We'll drive by there and you'll see the oil around them. Catch them all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the yeah. way that felt stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.